down to green we recap our season opener at daytona we talk to travis pastrana nitro circus sim racing we take a look at how you're racing at home with the logitech show us your rig segment all that and more tonight on countdown to green Hello, everyone, and 
welcome to the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. I'm your host, Camille Salzar Hadaway, and joining me as always, we have Alan Cavana and Blake McCandless. How are you two doing? Oh, it's great to be back after what we saw in Daytona. Hey, look, first and foremost, foremost shout out to iRacing legend William Byron, now Daytona 500 champion. It's so cool the worlds are mixing, and one of us is a Daytona 500 champion. That's how I look at it, Blake. <laughs> Oh, certainly so. Uh, congratulations to William Byron on accomplishing that remarkable feat. Uh, congratulations to iRacing on building what we saw this past Sunday, right? Atlanta Motor Speedway, an incredible finish, one of the best that people have seen in NASCAR in decades. Some are saying it's the best race ever. Uh, iRacing's on a pretty good roll here to start the NASCAR Cup Series season. The Coke Series, looking to continue that tonight here in Round 2 in Vegas. Really good roll. The question is... Are the drivers going to feel lucky? Uh, that was my best Vegas pun. Um, I'm going to work on it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Blake, why don't we uh, kind of check in with the latest updates with iRacing? Let's go ahead and do that. And again, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but I think it's worth mentioning again. And again, you can scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. I was trying to keep up with all the notes of everything that was in that post. I was reading it before we went live today. Of course, you could see the screenshot of Millbridge Speedway being a part of this latest build. Quarter Mile Dirt Track is going to be one heck of a very fun time. I know the dirt community has been asking about that for a very long time. The radar in the Tempest forecast system is debuting. Rain is coming to iRacing, and it's going to change every session depending on what the weather forecast is. Sometimes you may get it, sometimes you may not. Regardless, iRacing has put years and years of development into making rain racing a thing. So much else coming in this. The Delara 324 is coming out. The SRX cars are going to be part of it. If you want to read more information, scan the QR code on the right-hand side of your screen, or you can Google it, the iRacing Development Update for February 2024. It takes you right to it. It goes into great detail on everything that's coming out in this new update. I can't wait for it as a driver on the sim myself. Yeah, you got to challenge yourself, and the new updates will definitely bring on the challenge. But we also need to stay informed. So why don't we actually go into how Day Daytona went, and I'm going to have you two actually recap us while we go through some of the highlights. Yeah, we could go back and look at two weeks ago, right here, the season opener at Daytona for the 2024 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. 80 laps of action, and Alan, these drivers here, they did not disappoint. No, and, and what was maybe surprising to some, it was quiet, Blake, for much of this race. We had to go far into this race before we saw some of these cautions here. Unfortunate end for some, but you see how, how quickly this stuff happens. This is the front of the field, of course, where things can go wrong, and that's where we saw a lot of the incidents, Blake, at the front of the field. And we see a couple of these Coca-Cola cars getting together here later on in the race. And Graham Boland, who got turned in that previous highlight, we were interviewing him in the middle of the race. He said, I'd rather be racing up front than wait in the back and have something happen. He got his wish. Fortunately, it did not end the way that he so desperately wanted to. You can see riding on board here with the Williams Esports car, but it is our man Wyatt Tinsley goes Ooh. on a clean sweep at Daytona, wins his heat in the clash, wins the clash, and then wins at Daytona for his maiden win in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series and perhaps a coveted playoff spot, Alan. What else did you take away here from Daytona? Yeah, well, that's a good-looking car right there. And look, teammates, that's what mattered at Daytona. And what I saw out of the Spire cars is a, a message to the entire field that they are the leaders right now for the team championship, the favorites. Look at Casey Kerwin there. Look at Malik Ray. The way they were able to work together. I know it was Daytona. I know it was the high banks. But those were two strong performances from two strong drivers teaming up together this year for Spire. Team championship all the way for Spire right now. It was great to see those new places, new faces coming together, Blake. Well, I think new places, new faces, that's exactly right, Alan. And it wasn't just Spire Motorsports that did that. It was a lot of our new esports organizations that, even if it didn't necessarily play out in the final results, that M80, Oxygen Esports, you can see running side by side right there. Of course, you just mentioned Spire Motorsports who will be leading the team standings after Daytona. All of these brand new organizations had a fantastic debut at Daytona. We know it's a place where anybody can win, anybody can get the job done but these new esports teams these new organizations that joined the series in 2024 made their mark 
at Daytona. They're looking to hope to continue that tonight here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. As we take a look at the individual driver standings, of course, Wyatt Tinsley standing at the top of the heap with his 40 points and his win. He will lead the stage one points as we continue to move forward. And very early on, I know it's it's very early, Alan, to take a look at the playoff standings, but we know that's what these drivers are looking at all season long. You could see, honestly, a lot of the same players that we saw in 2023 that are a part of not just the top 10, but the top 20 in the point standings as well. A lot of drivers who right here will look to continue their momentum uh, tonight at Las Vegas never too early to look at points for both the drivers and the teams and look who's on top spire they just had such a good run in daytona on top right now so do those jgr cars joe gibbs racing just six points back i'm looking at the left side not too bad the right side i came in i was part of it man i hyped up william byron esports a ton one race i know it was daytona but not the hole you want to dig yourself in minus 39 already so some teams on the right side a lot of work to do camille but spire motorsports taking the reins right now hey a lot of work to do and i heard a little bit of gloating uh from blake's uh you know going over those individual points but you know we'll get to that a little later i think for now you know although we're here in the coca-cola series there is another e-nascar series that a lot of college students may want to keep their eye on Certainly, right, there's a lot going on in the eNASCAR world. The eNASCAR College High Racing Series is back for yet another semester of racing. The next race that is coming up, you can see right there on our calendar, you can actually start qualifying right now for that third race at Talladega. They're going to rope in all of these races for a semester long. I guess that's what we can call it, points championship that is coming up at Talladega Super Speedway. Uh, uh, several eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series drivers have joined the fray. They're competing for $3,000 to win at Talladega in scholarship money. Matthew Zwack coming off of his win. You can see the highlights here at Darlington Raceway. Oh, <laughs> really close quarters there in the turn number three. But these NASCAR Xfinity Series cars put on a great show. A lot of different combinations. And of course, if you are a college student and you want to represent your school you can qualify for it right now in the iRacing UI and try to compete on the race that'll be happening on March 19th. And it's year long. You know, you get to earn some tuition money every race. I mean, it's it's pretty good. I wish they had that when I was in school. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if I would qualify because the competition is it's intense. Tough. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Guys like Steven Wilson, they're winning races here, then they're winning exactly. college money. It's not fair. <laughs> uh, it's not fair. It's not fair at all. But you know what? We, we love to watch it because it is still entertainment. That it, There's some good races in there. Uh, but for now, you know, Alan, one of the things that we like to do here on Countdown to Green is to check in with the teams, the drivers, the people behind the teams that help make this come together. So who are we checking in with this time? Yeah, maybe you heard of him, Travis Pastrana. Blake was telling us about all the new names that have joined the series this year. Nitro Circus, such a big name, such a big brand. Travis Pastrana in the sport, in our series right now. We talked to him earlier about now that he's part of the NASCAR, eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series, how, how important is eSports to him and the Nitro Circus team? Here's what he told us. Um, eSports, we really, I mean, I've obviously been doing iRacing for, for the longest time. And even while I was first starting into trying the K&N series and NASCAR, I was like, oh, this is a, a huge asset. Like, this is something that I need to learn these tracks that can, you know, because we don't get a lot of practice in NASCAR. The tires kind of fall off pretty quick. So it's your first lap is, is really important out there. Um, but when kind of COVID hit, I think the whole world really took notice to to esports and you know how many drivers had sims and, and everything that was going on so um you know for me i'd love to see nitro cross just throwing it out there um you know some of these tracks and some of the jumps and, and the cars that, that we have to hopefully uh, eventually make it to uh to esports and you know for people to be able to kind of experience you know a little bit more of of that world and what we're experiencing there so um you know to be a part of it in any way is really cool so um yeah definitely excited for, uh, for nitro circus to um you know kind of a uh, sponsoring on a car um you know it's it's uh it's gonna be gonna be pretty cool and what's great about Travis is that he has run the, NAS the top levels of NASCAR, trucks, Xfinity, and Cup Series. I covered him in a truck race at Las Vegas. He has experience at the track tonight. So we asked him, what's it like to race Las Vegas Motor Speedway? Uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway is one of the last uh, 
great, like almost dirt tracks. It's not a dirt track, but uh, you show up and there's so much sand on the course um, that it kind of changes a lot. And, you know, it's different because you usually qualify at one time a day and it's because of the desert, it just bakes one side of the track. And then in the afternoon, it bakes, bakes the other side of the track. So your tires and your handling acts completely different. And, you know, that's actually something that was pretty cool because you can you can put what type of the time of the day on, um, you know, on the sim and on iRacing, and it's it actually shows you, um, it gives you a good feel of what's going on. So uh, for Connor and I to go out there, we had a, you know, Connor had never even sat in, uh, you know, a, a truck before, a NASCAR truck, series truck, and he had to go out there with no qualifying and no practice and <laughs> some of the best drivers in NASCAR um, as we're battling. So it was really cool to have the same experience beforehand. I remember that race. It was a lot of fun. But Travis himself, he's always up to something. The last time he was at iRacing headquarters, he was attempting to break the Climb the Clouds record at Mount Washington. So we asked him, how does iRacing help him with all these fun endeavors he's on? Um, yeah, I mean, I... I race everything that I can and I jump into a lot of series kind of fresh. So um, most of the drivers that I'm racing at the level that I'm trying to compete on, um, you know, have grown up. They know these tracks inside and out. Um, I'm showing up to places not really even, you know, I'm still trying to figure out the vehicle that I'm driving, let alone the, the course that I'm on. So I think the biggest thing for me is to memorize um, the courses. So when I racing, um, you know, Chris and, and all the, the crew was basically like, hey, we're going to have Mount Washington. It's going to come out the day before the race. I'm like, that. that's not enough time. Um, so I flew up to iRacing headquarters uh, before going to Mount Washington because I've got this car that's close to 900 horsepower up one of the scariest roads, the biggest exposed cliffs and usually have weather and fog and ice. And so you could hit all the stuff on the same. I went around a bear, um, you know, one time going up the, the mountain, like you never know what this mountain's gonna throw at you. And um, a top speed of 144 miles an hour on a road that most people won't get above 15 is it, it's terrifying. It was the first time I crossed the finish line and didn't think, oh, what was my time? I just thought, oh, I, still, I made it, <laughs> I'm alive. Um, so when you have that much pressure and you know that Subaru built this car, we but everyone thought it was built for Jim Connor, but it was built to set a record up, up Mount Washington. And it was actually a really scary Jim Connor car. That thing, it had so much downforce that it was so hard to get it to break traction, but once it broke traction, um, you know, coming around that last dirt corner, I, I, I thought I was gone for sure um, at, at Mount Washington, but it was like you're gripped to the ground. And then as soon as you get more than like three to five degrees of, they call it y'all in NASCAR, but when you get a little drift going, it just unloads and you're, you're off the course. So for me, I'm not a Scott Speed. I'm not a, an F1 or an Indy car driver that's used to this arrow. Um, so I needed to make sure that my lines were spot on and I probably didn't give everything that car might have been able to handle, but we were, I mean, we, me and the mouse in my pocket was, uh, scared the entire way up, sliding, drifting, jumping, roads so rough and, uh, without iRacing, I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have pushed it as far. Um, but if I did, I definitely wouldn't have been on the road. That is crazy. I'm glad iRacing could help you there, Travis. Well, and it's cool that he's not only here in the series, but he's also bringing it in real life to Las Vegas. So for those going to Las Vegas this weekend for the races, how can they check out Nitrocross? Here's what Travis told us. And nitrocrossracing.com, go online, check it out. We're uh, we're doing our best to, you know, we're not really overlapping um, much. I think, you know, a little bit on the, the truck race. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go see Matt Crafton, but I think Crafton might even come out and trying to talk him into doing a Can-Am on Saturday. Uh, but especially if you're going to the cup race, um, you know, if you come out a day or two early, Friday night's gonna be awesome. Saturday night's gonna be just, it's, it's gonna be insane. We've got our biggest field we've ever had. Um, you know, in the top class, we've got, I mean, all the way across the board, our classes are at maximum capacity. Uh, we have a really cool track. We have an over under cross, there's jumps. Um, it's, I mean, right in, they call it, call it the Nitro Dome. It's, uh, you know, Planet Hollywood parking lot where F1 was downtown. Um, if you're not doing anything wherever you are in the world, fly into Vegas, come hang out. Saturday night is gonna be one hell of a show. It's the season finale for us. And uh, yeah, stay and watch NASCAR, man. It's, uh, it's a Motorhead stream, really.
That sounds like great advice, guys. Camille, I mean, I got engaged in Vegas, so crazy things happen oh. when you go to Las Vegas. So listen to Travis Pastrana after you watch tonight's race, of course, and then head to Las Vegas. Why not? I love that fun fact. I think our <laughs> iRacing production team should hear that we should be going to Vegas, right? I think that's what I got away from this. Absolutely. Thanks, Travis. Appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Let take us to Vegas. Let us enjoy. Uh, okay, well, we won't go to Vegas just yet, but we are actually going to go into the vault. From the vault, we have another seg or another throwback to a moment past in our simulation series, our eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing or series. And this one um, is going to be a bit familiar for us three. Take it away, Justin. It's time to take another look in the vault. And this time, it's recent history. The year is 2022. And for the first time in eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series history, a live championship stage was set for the four finalists. Graham Bolin, Bobby Zelensky, Stephen Wilson, and the eventual champion Casey Kerwin all traveled to Uptown Charlotte for their chance at winning $100,000 and the newly minted Dale Earnhardt Jr. Cup. I was there that night. I was surrounded by NASCAR and eNASCAR fans alike. The four competitors had their personal rigs up on the stage with Glory Road surrounding them. Fans, friends, and family all watched the action from the ballroom floor underneath, and dignitaries such as Dale Earnhardt Jr., Steve Letarte, and Eric Almarola stood alongside the stage. The crowd was interactive, the atmosphere was tense, and by the end of the night, Kerwin hoisted the Dale Jr. Cup with Dale himself right alongside. And that's been a look back at one of the most memorable moments over the last 14 seasons of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Thank you for that, Justin. And of course, that's from uh, the iRacing staff writer, Justin Malello. I cannot forget that night. Do you remember the band that was in right when you enter? It was loud, just setting the tone immediately when you walk through those doors. That was the band of the Carolina Panthers, Percussion, if you get oh, the, the, the no. pun. Yeah, no, they were there. They're, they're known all over Charlotte. I mean, that was a big deal. That's what it was. It was such a big deal for the city of Charlotte, for the iRacing community, for the NASCAR community. You saw everyone that was out there, Blake. I mean, the, the mix of the of the world, and we, we know that, uh, you know, that the real world racers are involved in iRacing and they get on, but to have everyone in the same room and really mix the worlds and see it, the visual at the NASCAR Hall of Fame and the big trophy, so memorable. So memorable, and it really puts a, a real test on these drivers that are so comfortable, that are so used to sim racing in their own environment, and they're taking them completely out of their comfort zone, having to do something new and execute with the most pressure that they've ever had in their lives on the line. It was great the first year. It was great last year. It's been a fantastic time and a real uh, test of these drivers' fortitude every time that we've seen these live events. And a real testament to what the community has brought together through this series. I feel like next time, though, when we meet, we all have to jump into rig and race Ooh, each other. I um, may regret that uh, later. But for now, what I'm, I'm not going to regret. Yeah, Blake's fine with it. <laughs> I know, of course <laughs> you are. Cool. What I'm not going to regret is my favorite <laughs> segment of the show. This is Logitech. Show us your rigs, where we get to see your rigs at home um, on social media. You send it to us time at, and time again. So let's get to our first one. Let's see what we got. Oh, a trio, a I setup for I the ages from Chad. This is great, the trio, When what's even cooler, the art. This was a room made for sim racing. I mean, when you mix those high level rigs that we're seeing there, those are nice, Blake. Uh, and then all the art, that's a really nice spot right there. And I was about to say, you got well-rounded, you got the open wheel rims, you got the got the uh, oval rims, everything that you need right there. Great, nice. great artwork. It's looking well. good, it's looking good. I wanna get to the next one. Let's see who we have here from Karsting. Oh <laughs> man, this is uh, the speed limit sign makes that. I don't even care what the setup is, the seat, uh, the fact that the the monitor is a little ways away, the speed limit sign right there. Three. I, I mean, come on, that's perfect. You even got the NHRA sticker that's near and dear to my heart. 
perfect. Perfect sim rig right there. Best we've There's ever seen. There's a street out there that's missing a <laughs> sign. Uh, the next one here, we have a, wait, wait a second. Is this a skeleton racing? It is. It looks like a little spooky. I like the green. <laughs> Obviously, we got, you know, countdown to green here. It looks like my room right here, but the triple monitor, spooky driver. Um, yeah, they may have to put a little, you know, add a little weight to the driver a bit, but, um, you know, you got to add some, got to make it equal. So, but good, uh, good rig. I like it. Uh, I like that the uh, the skeleton hand gloves that Dale Jr. has has been taken uh, to to another level with that one. And you know this one quite set up for comfort here. Uh, looking down and uh, definitely something you can kind of lean in, you know, yeah. sit back a little bit, relax, and uh, be able to sim race at the same time. Yeah, and like it, it, PVC, I mean, very very affordable and like custom, like made it yourself made it happen we love to see that as well let's go to the last one here we have from steven there's lots of sticky notes yeah. steven what are your chores whatever <laughs> what i mean maybe it reminds you of all the buttons look at all the buttons on the steering wheel standard desk mount i mean that's all you need right you just need a little mount at home you don't need you could have a variety of sim setups this one works just as well as the rest and and sometimes you need the reminders about what works and what doesn't camille whatever gets you to victory lane that's what counts in the sim world whatever you need to do to get you on show us your rigs so be sure to send <laughs> us your pictures of your rigs so then we could have some fun with them make sure to use the hashtag eNASCAR on all the socials and tag iRacing and NASCAR well you know what guys are you guys feeling lucky oh yeah well, sure. we're going to see. We're in Vegas. It only makes sense to bring back our favorite Vegas segment, roll them and fold them. This is where we're going to ask you a few questions. I'm going to ask you a few questions. We're going to see how you feel about the series and see what you're willing to gamble. Will you roll the dice or would you fold the cards on these questions? Our first one, Blake, this is for you. Will we see more than 10 winners? You know, Camille, this is a question I, I feel like we've answered in past years and every single year I've rolled them. And you know what? I'm going to roll them again this year. I think the fact that we are so competitive in this series now, I think it's time. It, it's time that we have over 10 winners. We've seen it the number of times we've asked this question in the past. We've had over 10 winners. I think we easily get it this year as well. There's definitely, I'd say, over half the fields more than capable of winning races in this series. So over 10 easy money this this year i think we easily get 10 or more easy money there let's see if it's going to be easy money for the next one alan this is for you will ray al alpha make the playoffs yeah ray, ray alfala, alfala. Uh, i, yeah, he, I always want to put ray al <laughs> they're two legends right there <laughs> well he's back but look i'm sorry fold them fold those <gasps> cards the man is a legend the hall of famer but he's back in the series with a bunch of talented race car drivers. I just don't see it happening. I'll, I'll look at it like this. I just covered Jimmy Johnson in the Daytona 500. And guess what? He struggled to make the field seven times. Still a legend, still a Hall of Famer. It's a new ball game out there. I'm sorry, Ray. I'm folding him this time. Ooh, Alan thinks times are changing. Well, Blake, let's take a look. Will all three segment winners uh, make the playoffs? What are your thoughts? You know, I was thinking about rolling them, but I'm actually going to fold them here with this question. And again, we're going to split this season up into segments as far as points are concerned. And we're going to keep the driver points going all year long, but we're also going to split the season up into segments and allow those segment winners to get some additional playoff points at end of the year. I think, and this is typically the case, we see some drivers that start surging in the middle to latter part of the year. You can think of Garrett Lowe last year. So I think it's possible we have a segment winner that doesn't quite have enough to make the playoffs. This season. Okay. Next one. Let's go. Will will we see a rookie make the championship for Allen? Yeah, I'm gonna take a real gamble here and say let's roll them because last year we saw this happen with Tucker Minter making it all the way to the the championship four. We have a stacked field again of young, new drivers, new talent. Roll them. I like it. One in the championship four. All right. Well, from rookies to a vet, will we see? Steven Wilson make a repeat as a champion. And again, I don't want this to be a slight on Steven Wilson at all because Steven Wilson is an incredibly talented driver, but every single year, I'm going to fold them with this question. It's just too competitive, too difficult of a task to accomplish. Not that I don't believe in Steven. He could be a championship four competitor for sure, but I just think there's so many great drivers in this series. Too hard to repeat as it currently sits right now. I'm going to fold him on this question. Ooh. 
Blake, you're being kind of hard. Right. I think bit. you're being kind of hard. You're being kind of hard. Okay, we're gonna see. Last one, Alan. Will the same team win both the driver and team championships? It, it, we're racking our brains here. If this has ever happened, I'm gonna say roll them. I like this gamble because I just love the drivers and the teams that they're on. Look, so far this year, I've been hyping William Byron Esports and we saw what Spire did. Think of who's on Spire, Casey Kerwin, Malik Ray. So I think this happens. The driver that wins the overall championship is also on the team that wins the overall championship. Roll them this year, it's gonna happen. Ooh, you're, you're a gambling man. You're willing to take that risk there. Um, of course, you know, we do have to make sure that the drivers aren't gambling on the track as well. So with that, why don't we go through the track analysis and see what to expect here in Vegas? Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, Travis Pastrana, you know, he called it something of the last dirt track. It's not quite a dirt track out there in Las Vegas, but let's take a look because it is that that beautiful D-shaped oval that we're so used to in the racing series out in Las Vegas. They opened this up in 1996, a mile and a half track, the cookie cutter type track. The turns are banked at 20 degrees. The straights are nine and 12 degrees. And last year's winner, Michael Conti, maybe his last or one of his last wins. So uh, last year's winner, not in the field tonight. So we'll see what go what, what happens tonight, Blake, on this beautiful track out there in the E Desert, if you will. Yeah, no, my, no, Michael Conti uh, for this <laughs> one. I feel like that's going to really affect our picks as we get into that um, because it's known that Alan and I have a tendency to go with the previous <laughs> winner. But you know what, before we get to the picks, let's get into that track, Blake. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm actually getting off the apron here in turns one and two at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, which gotta say, that's actually one part of this that's difficult. If we do get uh, some green flag pit stops, it's gonna be a little hard uh, to make it work. But uh, we're gonna go and kind of show you all the way around this racetrack. Top of turns three and four, and especially in three and four, I think that's where you're gonna see a lot of moves being made. You're gonna see drivers running low, you're gonna see them running high, and if your car's loose, that's gonna be a trouble spot. The one thing here in iRacing though, with this scan of Las Vegas Motor Speedway, as we go down to the bottom, look at the bumps. You can see how treacherous the bottom of one and two is. Personally, it's not really a, a line that I love to run. You're gonna see it utilized tonight, but it's definitely not where I wanna run. Now here at three and four, car is much, much different. You can you really want to keep it right there on the white line. I wasn't able to do that as I was talking. And again, trying to build some heat in these tires right here. Um, but as we go into one and two, you're going to see some of the shadows that we have from the billboards out here. You're going to be able to run out here much smoother up here by the wall. And with the draft and how important it is in these next-gen cars, I think that's a line that we're going to see a lot tonight. The middle to the top of one and two. And then, of course, I just love ripping the wall in three and four as well. You get out there, you're able to put the throttle down. And particularly here in these next-gen cards, as you get off at three and four, we're gonna go down to the apron here. This is a really treacherous spot with how snappy these next-gen cars are. You're really gonna have to commit if you're gonna run beneath that apron. We've seen a lot of wrecks on the front straightaway here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway over the years. You're gonna have to commit to getting down on that apron probably as soon as you get off for turn four, because otherwise you move down too late, it's gonna be a little sketchy. And now the question is, which driver do we think is going to be able to handle this track? Blake, let's start with you and your pick. All right. Well, of course, as the reigning, you know, champion from Daytona, who not it's only got race, first, Blake, but picked the winner race. of the race, I'm going to try to keep it two for two going with my man, Graham Bolin. His performance on the mile and a half late last year was outstanding. I think Graham's looking for a rebound and Kansas City Pioneers going to go two for two to start this season. I, too, am picking a pioneer, but look, I met the man himself, Wyatt Tinsley, down in Daytona for the 500, winners only, and he said, will you pick me, Alan? Why didn't you pick me to win Daytona? Well, I said, I'm going to pick you to win Las Vegas. So Wyatt Tinsley goes two for two to start the season. Hey, I'm not a gambler, but I'm going with a safer pick here. I'm going with Nick Ottinger, who, you know, delivered consistently throughout last series and also in Vegas within the top five. So I believe that Nick could bring it. Great pick. Thank you, Alan. Not, not as good as mine. Not as good as mine. Oh, okay. We'll see. All right.
Well, you know what? Uh, we'll stop the gloating because we got a race to get to. Thank you so much for watching Countdown to Green, but be sure to stick around because we have the pre-race coming up and, of course, the main event. Each year, NASCAR begins its season during Black History Month and recognizes the accomplishments of past and present icons within the sport. From Sam Bell Navis, one of the first black corporate executives, to Bubba Wallace, the first black driver to earn multiple wins within the NASCAR Cup Series. Milestones like these continue to drive our sports future, and we are proud to celebrate them all year long. Every time you sit behind the wheel, you buckle up for the unexpected. You get ready to take on the competition, embrace yourself for the chaos, the speed, the weather, the unknown. But above all, when strapping in, you put trust in yourself, your intuition, making your guide to win, your drive to win. He's a winner in this. And nothing is going to stop you from winning. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. For anything on iRacing, there's just one name you need, Mo Cody. We now provide the best of the best in setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, and event organization. With cars across all four license classes, we have what you need to hit the track with confidence. Grab a subscription and save money while going fast at MaconeSetupShop.com forward slash subscriptions. And remember, at Maconey Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. Is this the start of a dynasty? Ryan Blaney is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. A redemption tool. Ready to go to work. Is this the face of a ruthless competitor or a villain? I'd be your favorite driver. Is it time for a breakthrough? Let's go! To get back to breaking stuff? Hey, or is this the makings of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? It's all of the above, and it's about to go down. Any questions? Something, something that I can't explain The wind is calling out my name Let it rain on me You know I put it the hours And I'm not gonna wait in line I'm gonna take what's mine to see you gotta take the lead $500,000 heads west.
to the Silver State, where tonight from iRacing's virtual Las Vegas Motor Speedway, we say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome to round two of the 2024 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. And happy that you're with us alongside for the ride. My name is Evan Pasoko, joined as always by Blake McCandless. And Blake, maybe just as much so as Daytona, Las Vegas feels like home. One of the very few tracks that have been on the calendar for all 15 years of this eNASCAR championship. Gee, I wonder why you would say Las Vegas feels like home. Well, what a coincidence. But yes, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, a staple of this series, a great track to follow up the action we saw at Daytona. And again, I think it's a big track of, track of opportunity like we talk about with Daytona Talladega, where somebody, pr pretty much anybody, can go out and try to get an early season win. And it has been the story so far this season, a dominance for Wyatt Tinsley. Two for two, including that season opener win just two weeks ago in Daytona. Trends are something that we've seen a lot here in Las Vegas, too, though, Blake. It had been the Michael Conti story for the last two seasons, not competing here in 2024. Does that open up the door? We're going to go trackside and find out. Let's go down and take a look at your Coca-Cola starting grid. Pole position goes to the M80 number 10 of Steven Wilson, his third career eNASCAR poll and there he is Wyatt Tinsley looking for some more Tinsley magic tonight he starts in second as he lines up for the Kansas City Pioneers Row number two we'll see the Williams Esports 51 of Donovan Strauss next to Travis Pastrana's Nitro Circus Sim Racing Team's 99 of Matthew Zwack highest starting rookie in the field back at row number three the second of the Williams cars will be the 53 of Parker White to his outside in P6 the 18 JG Toyota of Bobby Zelensky. And on row at number four, P7 on the grid tonight is the Oxygen Esports 22 of Femi Olads and Boson. And the second Joe Gibbs Racing car in the top eight, it's the 54 of Daniel Falkenham. And round out your top 10, on row five, it is the Spire Motorsports 77 of Casey Kerwin and the second Kansas City Pioneers Toyota that won the 48 of Graham Bolin. Last year's championship four competitor in Garrett Lowe for BS Plus competitional lineup from 11th, 12th. Going again is Timmy Holmes for RFK Racing. Lining up in 13th for Tony Kanaan, it's Vicente Salas. And in 14th, the other BS Plus competition driver in Jordi Lopez. Malik Ray, the other Spire Motorsports entry, will start from 15th tonight with Dylan Duvall representing Nitro Circus. We'll go from the 16th starting spot. Inside of row number nine, you'll see Seth the Merchant for FGR Excel, as well as Tucker Minter for William Byron Esports in 18th. 19, the former series champion for 2311, and Keegan Leahy will start alongside Colin Keister for Tony Kanaan, rounding out your top 20. Back on row number 11, halfway home, it is the RFK Racing number 17 of Colin Bowden and the Front Row Motorsports number 38 car of Michael Cozy Jr. Cody Bias going to be the inside of row number 12 in his Pittsburgh Knights uh, entry. And alongside him, the second front row car, the 34, with Derek Bordeaux, not too far from his teammate. Row 13 has got some heavy hitters. Four-time eNASCAR champion Ray Alfala in the eRacer 69 and a four-time eNASCAR Las Vegas race winner. It is the M80, you guessed it, 80 of Ryan Luza. Row number 14, just behind them, going to be the Junior Motorsports number eight car of Caden Honeycutt and the Kevin Harvick Incorporated 62 of Matt Busa. And through your top 30, Kwame Scott will take the Latardi Sports 36 car off from P number 29. And Garrett Maines rounds out those top 30 in the FGR XL E Racing number 12. KHI looking to rebound after a tough Daytona. They'll look to do so with Jimmy Mullis going from 31st. The second e-racer entry in Tyler Gary will start in 32nd tonight. Row 17, you'll see Oxygen Esports' own Zach Novak, the former series champ, as well as Briar LaPred for Junior Motorsports. He'll start from 34th tonight. 35th is Ryan Doucette for the Pittsburgh Knights. Michael Guest, playoff competitor from last season for 2311. For Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin, will start 36. Nick Ottinger, deep start, uncharacteristic of him. He'll start from 37th tonight alongside Jonathan Delaney in the number three for Team Dillon. And rounding out your 40-car field will be Taylor Hurst. Back-to-back -back entries for 
Team Dylan here in the rear of the field. And Steve Letarts' Dylan Alt will go from 40th tonight. But we catch up here with the man starting up front once again. Steven Wilson had his shot to win at Daytona last week. And he starts alongside the winner in Wyatt Tinsley on the front row. Steven, how are you feeling tonight about Las Vegas and approaching this race? Well, obviously feel pretty good starting up front. Uh, got a lot of back-end teammates up here with me. I think we're eight of the top ten again. Uh, just pretty close to how we were at Homestead. So hopefully our race set is just as good as there. Uh, got to thank M80, uh, all the people, all the sponsors there, and then, of course, everyone who put in work behind the scenes these last couple of weeks to be able to have the speed like this. So hopefully we uh, can just carry it through to the race and have good fortune. I know these mile and a halfs have been kind to you. Both you mentioned your back end team as well as you personally over the last two seasons. What is it about perhaps this track that you think suits your driving style? Um, I think, you know, just this track is so much about saving tires, but also going fast, driving smooth. I feel like uh, I've pretty much been able to maximize that to a pretty good extent for over the past couple of years. And um, I just hope that, you know, it, it once again shows in this race. I know uh, warm up wasn't that great on speed, but uh, that's a different animal than this race. So we'll see what we have here in a second. Former series champ will go from pole tonight, looking to clinch his playoff spot early in 2024. We'll leave the Iowa City native to his car and the, the M80 machine. Well, this is an important one, Blake, because first of five intermediate races on the season. So walk us through it with a look at our NASCAR race analysis. Going to be 100 laps here for 150 miles at this mile and a half at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Pit road speed down to 50 miles an hour. And again, a deceivingly difficult pit road to get on out of turn number four here at Las Vegas. You'll lose about 27 to 30 seconds with a four Goodyear Eagles tire pit stop there in the pits. Three sets of tires available. That's something that a couple of cautions come our way throughout the race. We will be talking about. And again, that pit window, not necessarily as far as they can go on fuel per se, but looking to see those stops somewhere just beyond the halfway point. And of course, at the end of the road, not only a jackpot, but a possible ticket to the playoffs on the line as always. So Steven Wilson going to be in control of the field. He's joined by Tinsley, a two-time winner already this season. One of those in an exhibition, and of course the other in the Daytona opener. Pace car down and in. We're happy to have you with us on the iRacing Esports Network. Let's go racing in Vegas. Tough to buy any separation, but a small advantage to the inside as they get up through the gears, head to the back straightaway for the first time. And I think you're really going to start to see a little bit of defensive driving here up at the front of the field. A lot of this race is going to play out by how you protect and defend your track position. And Stephen Wilson mentioned it at the top of the show. A lot of friends up there at the front of the field. They're not as likely to be racing each other, side drafting each other. But imagine that they would form up very quickly and, and try to form some form of organization. Because we've seen, Evan, at these mile and a half with this next-gen car, but the fact that in iRacing, every car is equal aside from the setup that they put on the car. They have the same horsepower, same everything. Really tight up here at the front of the field. The margin is so close between these competitors. And it'll be fun when we get to some of the races later this year in which they are not all running different setups. That'll be another challenge new for this 2024 campaign. You're looking back just outside of the top 10, a whole lot of three wide. Middle of it all, I see that six car, the Castro Edge Ford, a Timothy Holmes P12. He's got a couple cars inside and out. Now he finds himself just two by two, but he will push that next car up in line right to the middle. And we do it again as Lowe now finds himself. Oh, and it's all going to go wrong. Garrett Lowe gets turned. He collects Tucker Minter in an early wreck for caution number one. And I think, Evan, if you think back to last year, what was the first yellow flag that we saw in that race? It was somebody trying to make a four wide move early in the race. And fast forward a year, the same exact thing happens here in turns three and four. And I know this is something we walked through early in the race, that three and four is a corner where every lane is available especially early in this race and these drivers are going to try to go anywhere that their competition isn't to get a little bit of clean air try to improve that track position uh, but sometimes four wide we can we can fit four wide here on this racetrack but occasionally it doesn't work out like we saw right there 
Yeah, we'll see the replay. I think timing's the big thing here, Blake, because right there, I think the same time that Lowe goes to make a move three wide, the 22 sidesteps. Femiola tries to get out of line, and it puts them from two or three wide to four because they both made that move at the same time. You see Garrett Lowe, Tucker Minter uh, gets a big piece of that as well. Dylan Duvall, Garrett Lowe, Jordy Lopez, the four drivers that have significant damage in that and can take a scroll here in the sim and see that they have a meatball flag. It will be some required repairs. And that's how sketchy these cars can be, Evan, especially on cold tires. You just get a little bit of a bump in the wrong direction in the middle of the corner. You can see the violent overcorrect with this rack and pinion steering. Very, very easy mistake to make in this car. So it is a very, very early yellow as well that will slow things down. Leaders really struggled to get kind of any semblance of separation uh, early in this one, but uh, I think that's going to be a theme over the course of the night. And of course, you reference, you know, what we've seen here in the past. There's a lot of history to look back on having raced here in Las Vegas every single season uh, in the history of this NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Last year's race here, only four yellows total. Not to say that an early yellow is an indicator that will go over or under that margin uh, for the sake of the Vegas theme. However, interesting to note as we continue to get more years of experience Blake under our belts with these next gen cars we expect those margins to get tighter these teams to figure out more but also some questions to go away that being said this time of year there are always new builds to the service new updates and those are the things that drivers always have to keep an eye on as I think you've got a driver on the radio indeed we do Evan and it's Garrett Lowe started in the 11th position and Looks to be an early exit as far as this race is concerned. Garrett, what happened? Uh, not really sure. It looked like we were all just according on entry. Um, I don't know. Once I got into the 22, it took off. Like the once you get with these cars, once you get the right front hiked up like that on somebody's left rear, you're basically along for the ride. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Just a, I don't know, terrible way to go out in lap three. Um, obviously, nobody was trying to race that hard. Just made contact and wrecked. All right, Garrett. I know. Uh, not the start to the season that you would have wanted here, but of course we know that you'll have the speed later on in the season to get back up here, and hopefully we'll be talking to you soon under some better circumstances. So he's down pit road for repairs. We'll see if he gets back onto the racetrack or not. A couple of other damaged drivers have been able to limp back onto the racetrack. And of course, I want to remind you, as always, if you want to stay up to date with the world of Car, then scan the QR code on your screen now and stay in the loop with iRacing, the official simulation partner of NASCAR. Pace car going to be in this time. Steven Wilson will retain the control car position. The number 10 will decide when this race goes back green as they head to the restart zone off of turn number four. It's going to be Donovan Strauss, though, to his outside. What does the Duracell Chevy have for the M80 Ford? Green flag back in the air, and it's a good launch for the 10 on the inside. It's a very good launch for Steven Wilson. Going to be out by about a couple of car lengths or so. So as much as we thought the drafting would matter, it may be able to build up a run on him, but he's still going to have a couple of car lengths off of turn two. You see the field mostly double file down the back straightaway. Almost some four wide, a little further on back. But orderly so far up here at the front of the field. Donovan Strauss, who has started uh, up front, has been able to keep his place up there. A couple of big movers early on in this race, the Michael Cozy Jr. up to the 14th, or excuse me, 13th position from the 22nd starting spot. And how about Malik Ray, 30th to 15th? A couple of early moves he's made in the first eight laps. Yeah, he's been putting in work, and so have the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas. Teammates nose to tail as the 18 of Bobby Zelensky leads the 54 of Daniel Falkenham. It is not hard to find those interstate batteries, Toyotas on the inside line, uh, sticking out and working good together in those new Toyota Camrys with those 2024 body updates. We talked about the art updates to those. And the Mustangs is one car off and in the grass towards the rear. Sounds like that was maybe issues I think it's getting up to speed now, but it's 80 of Alusa who had the problem. He was P30, big issues. He's able to keep it on track, though, so we stay green, no yellow. And inside of the top 10, we've got two rows of three wide. 
That was some contact with Kwame Scott off of turn four. Luza went through the grass. He went sideways but was able to save it. No caution flag yet to speak of. So he's going to have to hope for a yellow to get back into this one. You can still see them three wide up here at the front of the field. We mentioned the JGR teammates trying to work together a little bit. Graham Bolin stuck in the middle of a sandwich right there. was really close. You can see how much these drivers utilizing every tool at their disposal, trying to side draft, do everything they can to put themselves in a good position. And it's really just this gaggle here behind them. They've single filed out quite a bit, but it is these two rows of three by three with the 48 and the 54 respectively in the middle who are really jammed up and then there's some space in front and much more space behind them at 18 car get a force clear Zelensky across the nose of Bowen maybe the 48 car cuts him a break thinks about going low can't do it the six car filled that gap that's Holmes and that's one of those situations right there where Bolin being uh, kind of forced in the middle, three wide, late there from Timmy Holmes. The, the big reaction's got to come from that car on the outside of Vicente Salas, and he was able uh, to adequately give those drivers enough space to be able to make that move work. Uh, also, some good work from Garrett Maines. You can see he was battling on the top side uh, of Graham Bolin there for just a bit of a lap as Bolin throws the block on Daniel Falkingham to try to get up into the top lane. Seems like, Evan, the, the longer this run goes on, that this is the last place you want to be right here where Derek Bordeaux is in the Loves Ford. You, it's looking like the middle lane kind of fizzling out a little bit. Not exactly a great lane to be able to move forward. So, Bordeaux, you can see, kind of stuck in it right now and get a really good sense of how bumpy this track is and and how treacherous that exact line is through one and two, right where that seam is. You can see the big checkups, everybody having to react to it. And those bumps have gotten much worse over time. Thankfully, the surface here, a couple of years old on the surface, makes it not quite as bad. But you'll hear drivers talking about those bumps this upcoming weekend when it comes to the Cup Series race. He's still stuck, to your point, right there in the middle, although that six of homes actually fighting to get to the middle. The six car leaves the bottom to pull in line behind the 34. And maybe if he's got some cars lined up, he's got a better chance. Although in front of him, Mains will clear him. And they will, for the moment, sort things out to two by two for now. But if a checkup off into three, similar to what we saw that caused the opening wreck in this race, but for a moment, maybe things calming for the slightest as we take a look back up towards the front where those top two have been able to break away just a little bit. It's Wilson leading Strauss and everybody else. And let's take a second. Look at all of that on the bottom. See it one more time. And again, it gets really tight off of turn four here at this racetrack. That wall really sneaks up on you in the exit of the corner. You can see it doing exactly that right there. And a great job by Ryan Luza. Again, that's why he's a former series champion. He's able to gather that one up, even though it was probably to his benefit uh, to, to not control that car, maybe come back onto the racetrack if he wasn't able to save it and bring out a caution. But I got to say, early on in this race, Evan, I am so impressed very early on with the FGR Excel race cars and the amount of speed that they've shown in 16 laps has been incredibly impressive. Seth the Merchant started back in 17th. He's up into the sixth position already. Garrett Maines from 30th. We've seen him battling in the top 10 for the last number of laps. That's incredible uh, to be able to move through this field that quickly. He had about, you know, a four or five car accident to help him with that. But both FGR Excel cars look very, very fast, at least in this short run. And somebody else who wants to join them is a big mover is Malik Ray. Is he four wide? He is now. Two to his outside, one to his inside. Tyler Gary pulls the parachute down the Nellis straightaway, bails out of that one, and they'll drop back down to three abreast. It'll put the 70 car on the inside of the racetrack, and it is a mess here in the high teens, low 20s. Looking like the top 10 did about a half a dozen laps ago, and you can see how it strings back off of the leaders opportunities of plenty if you're willing to make those moves but every corner is a hold your breath moment well again at this point you have to wonder Stephen Wilson alluded to it at the top of the show how much tires were going to matter in this race I don't see a whole lot of tire saving at the moment it seems like everybody's being really aggressive we're starting to reach that point of a run where cars that do have that long run speed. We mentioned our FGR Excel cars, and one gets off for loose off the corner, and Swack looks like he's not going to be able to save it. He's going to nose it in the outside wall. Second caution of the evening, and 
kind of works right into the point I was trying to make there, Evan, that we were going to start seeing some handling coming into play if these cars were able to handle past lap 20. Really easy with how these cars are usually set up here at Vegas to trend loose later in the run. And, well, that's exactly what happened. Uh, it looked like the merchant got a little bit loose. Wack has to react to it and unfortunately not able uh, to react in time uh, to keep his car going the right direction. Yeah, we'll wait to get a second look at what happened uh, with that Nitro Circus Sim Racing team car. Here it is. You could see him off the corner, and oh, he comes down. He makes a little bit of contact there uh, in the middle. That was another car that was trying to give a push to that uh, 14 machine that was a little bit loose in Femi Olot, and wasn't exactly center with Seth the Merchant, but Zwack, I think, trying to funnel back down in line. Didn't anticipate that he would be that far out of line. Uh, Zwack comes down, makes contact with him, and doesn't look like he's too hurt. Definitely got a little bit of a hit there with Michael Cozy Jr. Maybe some damage on that 38 Ford, but I think both cars look to be okay. Perhaps it's Cozy that comes out the worst with that with a little bit of right front fender damage. And it's going to bring a lot of these race leaders down to the pit lane. No shock there, Blake. You talked about kind of that cusp of where some of those handling issues would come into effect. So it is going to be wholesale service with a scorching track temp here in the Mojave of 107 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is everybody coming down pit road to get these race cars serviced. Well, we had the opportunity, and if you tuned in with us on Countdown to Green to talk uh, with Travis Pastrana, the team owner of the Nitro Circus Sim Racing Team, and Here's what he had to say on how important esports and sim racing is to the crew over at Nitro Circus. Um, esports, we really, I mean, I've obviously been doing iRacing for, for the longest time. And even while I was first starting into trying the K&N series and NASCAR, I was like, oh, this is a huge asset. Like, this is something that I need to learn these tracks that can, you know, because we don't get a lot of practice in NASCAR. The tires kind of fall off pretty quick. So it's your first lap is, is really important out there. Um, but when kind of COVID hit, I think the whole world really took notice to to esports and you know how many drivers had sims and, and everything that was going on so um you know for me i'd love to see nitro cross just throwing it out there um you know some of these tracks and some of the jumps and, and the cars that, that we have to hopefully uh, eventually make it to uh to esports and you know for people to be able to kind of experience you know a little bit more of of that world and what we're experiencing there. So, um, you know, to be a part of it in any way is really cool. So, um, yeah, definitely excited for, for Nitro Circus to, um, you know, kind of a sponsor and on a car. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be gonna be pretty cool. And Travis has done a bit of racing uh, at Las Vegas, both uh, on the NASCAR side of things and in some other vehicles. But uh, he'll be around this weekend at the NASCAR Cup race. But also the big story is, of course, that Nitro Cross is going to be in Vegas. And here's how you can find out more and go and check it out. And NitroCrossRacing.com. Go online, check it out. We're, uh, we're doing our best to, you know, we're not really overlapping um, much, I think, you know, a little bit on the, the truck race. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go see Matt Crafton, but I think Crafton might even come out and try to talk him into doing a Can-Am on Saturday. Uh, but especially if you're going to the cup race, um, you know, if you come out a day or two early, Friday night's going to be awesome. Saturday night's going to be just, it's, it's going to be insane. We've got our biggest field we've ever had, um, you know, in the top class. We've got, I mean, all the way across the board, our classes are at maximum capacity. Uh, we have a really cool track. We have an over-under cross. There's jumps. Um, it's, I mean, right in, they call it, call it the Nitro Dome. It's a, uh, you know, Planet Hollywood parking lot where F1 was downtown. Um, if you're not doing anything wherever you are in the world, fly into Vegas, come hang out. Saturday night is going to be one hell of a show. It's the season finale for us. And uh, yeah, stay and watch NASCAR, man. It's, uh, it's a motorhead stream, really. We'll continue to cheer his cars on over the course of tonight's race. But again, uh, we appreciate Travis for giving us some time pre-race. And uh, if you're in town for the race this weekend, make sure you go out and, and check out Nitro Cross. But Blake, I've seen Travis here at Las Vegas in the NASCAR Truck Series at least three times. I'm thinking 2015, 17, and 20 maybe. Somebody can about right. fact check me on all of those. But he's, he's been around. He likes the town. And back once upon a time when I was calling Pacific Time my home, it was always good to get out to Las Vegas and certainly encourage everybody to go check out Nitro Cross because it sounds like a good time.
Uh, certainly. I, I was able to come out to this facility for the first time about three years ago and can echo all of that. Uh, of course, Vegas, very fun place to visit, but the racetrack, the facilities here uh, are fantastic. Uh, you can see everything very well. The weather is usually pretty great out there this time of year. I think you can attest to that. So, uh, yep. yeah, it's a, a fantastic uh, place to go watch a race, have a good time, and and be able to enjoy everything. And there's usually a lot of activities going on around race weekend out there. So uh, really good time if you're able to make it out. I won't be able to make the trip this time, but I definitely have it on my calendar at some point in the future to go back out to Vegas. The dry heat is better than the humid heat. I will stand by that statement. That. Yes. I will and say, as a though, Florida, Nate is now, yes, now you're in Florida, so you I have the one to one. That. I have the one to one comparison. I will say, though, I'm pretty sure I was at a Vegas race once where cup qualifying was delayed to snow flurries. So anything can happen in the desert, uh, but it is a fun facility and again, a staple on this calendar. We saw all of the cars on the lead lap come down pit road. Four tires and a fuel seem to be the popular decision, so there are no changes on the front row. Wilson up the top spot, except it's a swap for the Williams cars. This time, Parker White to the outside green flag back in the air that 10 car jumped out about a mile in front of the field he's well ahead of side by side for a second on back I think he's trying to employ the the exact same strategy he had over the course of the last run that he got out to a couple car lengths lead and it basically stayed that way uh, throughout the little bit of that run but you can already see jumping up to the top side very early on trying to just go where they're not Casey Kerwin trying to build up to build up a ton of momentum running that top side if you're really uh, able to nail it get back to the gas and and make a big run so Kerwin as it, it seems to always be the case may find himself in the middle of the field at the start of the race but slowly and methodically shows us that vet veteran poise. It's hard to think of Kerwin. He's still uh, still a young man, but he has a veteran poise when it comes to this series. And of course, a former series champion. He knows exactly what he's doing. Right now, Evan, second and third, side by side, both Williams Esports cars. And I think you can see a little bit of communication with the spotter, with Donovan Strauss and, and Parker White going back and forth, trying to chase down Stephen Wilson. Yeah, we saw the Gibbs cars together earlier. Now it's the Williams Esports cars. They were side by side for second, but the outside has a bit of an advantage now. So maybe White edging ahead of his teammate in Strauss just for the moment. Uh, White of the 53 car top side and then Strauss the 51 on the bottom. Uh, they're both kind of dealing with Seth the Merchant right now, who has done a good job gaining 14 spots to get into the thick of things. Seth currently the highest running rookie in the field. Up on the outside is four wide midfield and turns one and two. The E-Racer cars side by side in that battle. Tyler Gary getting the push up there from Caden Honeycutt. Again, they'll, they'll race as hard back here as they do just about anywhere in the field trying to make their way forward. We talked about Malik Ray, the progress he was making. Again, that can all go away in the blink of an eye. Uh, Malik Ray up into the top 15, picks the wrong lane, gets shuffled back to about the 17th position. Start to see a lot more cars start to venture up to the top side. Uh, but as we continue to see this racing back here, Evan, I am just so impressed. I know we talked about it earlier. FTR Excel and specifically Seth the Merchant, 17th to third. And not many cars have been able to do that once they get up into the top 10. A lot of people up here, they started up front. But Seth the Merchant has got a car that he can really reckon with and he can make up some spots. So the Merchant, short run, definitely has, I think, the fastest car in the field right now. And with all of those passing opportunities and spots to be gained and lost, would you believe it that Stephen Wilson has led all 28 laps so far? Another car back in this mid-pack battle, the 36 of Kwame Scott. He's also working his way forward, but look at that paint scheme on the Sudoku 36 Chevrolet. He doesn't care about it just looking good, though. He wants it to finish good, and he's got quite the daunting task in front of him because they're about three rows deep, but three wide now, four wide, just outside his windshield. I don't know if that's going to work. Five wide, maybe, for a moment. And he's going to have a lot of traffic to navigate through. Here is the 34 of Derek Bordeaux gets turned right in front of him. Looks like it's just going to be that Lord <laughs> loves Ford almost in the exact same uh, scenario that Michael McDowell found himself in in Atlanta. It spun down to the inside wall in turn three. Now this time not going to hit the wall, and that is going to bring out our third caution of the night. Ran out of room, and I think for... 
how big of a bobble that was in amongst a four or five wide battle. I think one single car spinning to the apron about as just a good scenario as we could have asked for. Bordeaux going to be able to drive away with relatively minor damage on the 34 car. So let's slow things down for a third time tonight. It is still Steven Wilson out in front. He has led from the jump. You're watching round two of the 2024 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series from Las Vegas. Every time you sit behind the wheel, you buckle up for the unexpected. You get ready to take on the competition, embrace yourself for the chaos, the speed, the weather, the unknown. But above all, when strapping in, you put trust in yourself, your intuition, making your guide to win, your drive to win. He's a winner in this. And nothing is going to stop you from winning. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. For anything on iRacing, there's just one name you need, Mo Cody. We now provide the best of the best in setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, and event organization. With cars across all four license classes, we have what you need to hit the track with confidence. Grab a subscription and save money while going fast at MaconeSetupShop.com forward slash subscriptions. And remember, at Maconi Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. time ever, Nitro Cross is making its Las Vegas debut with that championship weekend, March 1st and 2nd, going down at the Nitro Dome, Planet Hollywood. Two nights of intense action-packed racing, featuring action sports legend Travis Pastrana, skate icon Leticia Buffoni, and UFC Hall of Famer Cowboy Cerrone. World-class drivers head-to-head, -head, right off the strip, under the lights, plus fan-fest, food, drinks, and more. Don't miss the Nitro Cross championship weekend, Las Vegas, March 1st and 2nd, Planet Hollywood. Tickets are going fast. Grab yours at nitrocrossracing.com. live in Las Vegas, where coverage of tonight's race is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. By Logitech G. Through design, engineering, and a love of driving games, Logitech G takes racing simulation to another level. Logitech G, the official wheel and pedals of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. By Sudoku. From fueling your favorite NASCAR teams to filling up at the pump, Sudoku is trusted to help vehicles perform at their peak. Sudoku, performance is what we do. By Maconi Setup Shop. Our setups, your victories.
and by Nitro Cross. Nitro Cross is making its Las Vegas debut this Friday and Saturday night at the Nitro Dome at Planet Hollywood featuring Travis Pastrana. Buy your tickets now at nitrocrossracing.com. We're getting ready to go back racing under the desert sun. Third caution, going to fall to the wayside. We are one-third of the way through this Las Vegas 150. Steven Wilson, where he's been all afternoon, out in front, takes the green flag. We're back underway. Another good jump, as we've seen every single time, but he brings the 53 of White with him. So first and second, clear down the back straight. Here comes Demerchant, the 14 car from third. And kind of a little bit of a shuffle in the running order uh, as a result of that caution kind of opens up the fuel strategy a little bit if we go green to the end. But of course, with how these drivers have been running, Evan, I'm not quite sure that we would get there at this point. Still about three wide for about the 10th position. Uh, that first battle that we see is just a little on up the road or a little behind the road that Steven Wilson is pacing right now. Femi Olat trying to make some moves on Colin Bowden right now. That 17 car that's up from the 21st starting spot. And to your point, we saw about a dozen cars pit, half of which even came in to top off before the restart. And up front, Steven Wilson needing to work hard to keep Parker White behind him. White had a good look that last time, wasn't able to make it happen. Those top four or five now breaking away from the hornet's nest that has been those teams all race long. The three, the four wide, the calamity part of the racetrack continues to be those cars just outside of the top ten. Last time by your top 28 separated by less than two seconds as you look off the back of your race leader. Again, I continue to be impressed with the merchant. It just seems his takeoff speed. We talked about how cars fire off in real life. If they're good on cold tires, they're obviously uh, going to get a little bit better as they build a little bit of temperature into them. But right now, the merchant first two or three, four laps of a run, his car is just insanely fast. And you can see right now, trying to at least get up to where he would maybe be on the front row if we had a restart down to the inside of Parker White and challenging for the second position. Going to get a little bit of drafting help behind from Bobby Zielinski that's going to help uh, Steven Wilson continue to break away, but the Merchant's still quite not able to do it. Further on back, this is Colin Bowden. We know he's going to be aggressive and try to make every move possible that he can, Evan. Uh, but one thing that we kind of have to mention as a result of that last caution, that just behind where Bowden's running, he's in about the 16th position right now. He's they're going to start to run up on drivers who came down and pit under this last caution. Those fresh tires are going to help them, but also with the fuel window, it's going to make things a little bit interesting. When I was out there driving a little bit earlier in the pre-race show, uh, I have a, an application that can measure exactly how much fuel I'm using. I could go 63 laps if I ran a full run with the fuel calculations that I had in those few laps I ran. However, that wasn't in the pack where the fuel mileage tends to be a little bit better. So we're looking at about 67 laps or so. If you could save about three or four laps, there's only about seven or eight cars that would be able to make it to the end should we go all the way. And right now, they all run 27th on the back, right? Those cars who came in and topped off. The big if is if we can run this race out. And a battle for 12th has been the thing that is the antithesis to this race getting a green flag run in because it's where all the chaos is. The battle for the lead up top single file for the moment, only about a car length and change between Steven Wilson and Parker. White and then back right here in the mid pack is where there's always something brewing. Three wide for a moment in the corner. They'll get back to two by two. Uh, but this is where we're seeing big blocks, big moves, and big passes. And I think that's where we're going to continue to see it. We just mentioned all those cars that came down pit road that are on that strategy. They don't want to mix things up and they're going to have to save. Uh, quite a lot. I mean, they're going to have to save two, three, maybe four laps of fuel to be able to make it to the end. So you're not going to see them up here going two wide, going three wide, running the top side of the racetrack. They're going to run the bottom. They're going to try to stay in line. So this race hasn't necessarily been orderly. It's going to be more orderly than it has been as we see another three wide move with Femi Owat, who has been in the middle of a lot uh, tonight, but has continued to try and make his way up into the top 10 in that bright colored number 22. Yeah, the quick trip colors look good. He was 
on the inside uh, of uh, the battle there with the 20 machine behind him, who we've been talking about, and Wyatt Tinsley and Femi Olat trying to get some of that. Is that a heat wave color scheme or the Miami Vice kind of look? The blue, the pink, the purple. It's a good look at Oxygen Machine. And right now he's on the inside of the 88 of Briar LaPrade. This battle for eighth. But the 22, a fish out of water right now. Everybody else lined up topside in the center of the corner. He's the only one on the bottom. So as they carry speed off of two, and well, there they go on by. The 88 of LaPrade gets clear. The 11 car. Now Vicente Salas going to pull up alongside him. So struggling a little bit for that 22 car pinned on the inside. Inside. You can see how difficult it is, especially when everybody's lined up in one and two. If you're running the bottom like Femi is, you're having to go over all of those bumps. And right now, he's got some clean air right there. Everybody else running the middle, but you can see everybody on the top side able to carry that momentum. They have a little bit of draft. They're going to side draft him. Uh, almost kind of like we're at a plate track there for a moment. So Femi being the lone car down there on the bottom, it can be good in the corners, not necessarily going to help you on the straightaways when everybody's kind of organized like they are right now. And this is a lot of what's been the focus of this show, Evan. We talked about FGR Excel, two teammates right now lined up. We've seen quite a few pairs of teammates up here at the front of the field that have been going at it. But right now, Demerchant trying uh, to fend off Garrett Baines, but not going to be able to do so. And Seth the Merchant, the rookie, uh, one of four in the field this season, next to his teammate Garrett Maines. Uh, it has been a theme, seeing some team cars bumper to bumper. For the moment, uh, Garrett Maines has the advantage, and now his teammate's under fire because here comes somebody else who we've talked a lot about tonight, and that's the 51, uh, Donovan Strauss up on the bottom. Strauss has been locked into this top five, top six or so all night long. A far cry from Maines, who started 30th, LaPrade a little bit further back, who started 34th so for all the drivers who have made big runs through the field equal much credit goes to Wilson to White to Zelensky and Strauss who have been here and have stayed up here Mains has been pretty busy on the sim. In fact, won an iRacing Daytona 500 a couple of weeks ago, and we were kind of promoing that a, a couple of weeks ago on the sim, the iRacing Daytona 500. Garrett Mains won one of those races, so congratulations to him on that honor. Who else Who else won an iRacing Daytona 500, Blake? I don't well, know. you know, I wasn't going to mention it, but I think you were <laughs> the one that called me home, weren't you? Yeah, that was, that was interesting. <laughs> That's the way it should be, because uh, if you called me doing a race, it would uh, be a pretty quick broadcast. So appreciate oh, you putting faith. in the effort for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's ride around this virtual Las Vegas Motor Speedway. This is the Coca-Cola onboard camera. He's up 16 positions and running inside of the 20 is one car into the outside wall off of two. The 18 of Bobby Zelensky from third. Great save by Zelensky right there. And he just got a little bit loose on his own, washed up into the safer barrier that's just off of turn two. And, you know, again, we're kind of at that point, Evan, with these drivers that have been out uh, since lap 20. That's the majority of the field that pit over 30 laps ago, this would be the point of the race if that car is a little bit too loose. And we know that you have to run the, these next-gen cars loose to be able to really have some speed. Uh, you're going to have to, this is where you're going to start to see a lot of drivers hanging on. We'll take a look at it one more time. Third car in line, 
And, uh, you know, Evan, I think he was straddling that seam right there. We talk about being able to run the bottom or run the middle of one and two. You kind of have to commit above that middle seam because it, it can upset the handling of the car if you're right on it. I don't think that helped the handling of his car either, but heated up that right rear tire. He's uh, he's going to be hanging on right now. He's in 10th. He was in third. And I wouldn't be surprised if he drops lower with how loose that car looks right now. Yeah, when he got sideways, he was smoking the right rear. That's how much he was putting on it. And he got into the outside wall. I think it could have been worse. Could have smacked it and taken himself out of it. But you're right. Let's see how he can hang on now as he finds himself back into P10. Probably the lowest his interstate batteries Toyota has been all night long. And it drops one more competitor off of the rear deck. Let us Steven Wilson, who has continued to lead every single lap. 53 of 53 so far as we are past the halfway point battle for second though is on to the inside comes the 48 car for third I should say Bowling gonna slide up in front shut the door and how about that for a nifty move for third yeah the, I know these two have had a little bit of a history between each other so that's one of those moves with two drivers that maybe haven't gotten along so well in the past that's what you're gonna see but Graham Bowling has just been shot out of a can in this run he had pretty much been hanging around in tent all night long and especially at this point in the race, we talk about tire saving. Graham Bolin is one of the best in the business at being able to do that. Looks smooth, calm, and collected right now, but is running some of the fastest times we've seen in this field. And this is really the first time we've seen a long run so far tonight. So Graham Bolin perhaps kind of being a little more conservative, trying to save those tires a little bit. And right now it is paying dividends. As, again, he continues to make up time on Stephen Wilson, your race leader. Bowling a two-time E-NASCAR winner. Looking for another one here tonight is in the conversation with 45 laps to go. As you can see, LaPrade way up topside. Nobody else venturing that far out. He tries to wind it up and get the speed as he comes off of the corner. He'll have the wrong gear at Mains. Mains going to use that apron to shortcut the trioval just a little bit. Keep the gap to the 88 car. And down at this end of the racetrack, the 88 decides to keep it in the middle. Notably, left side tires on that seam completely above it, whereas when Zelensky had the issue, it was the right side tires on the seam, and he was kind of running right in the middle of it. This time in three and four, though, right back down to the bottom. So Laprade searching a little bit here, not committed to one lane or the other. Laprade been so impressive in this race, started in 34, thought this was going to be a, a really tough time for him uh, to try to get back up through this field, but Breyer is definitely a sneaky driver when he has a really fast race car. He knows exactly what to do with it. He's made some great moves throughout the field. And, you know, he, he's exercised patience when he needed to. He's been able to go get find some clean air, make the moves that's necessary. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I would expect out of Briar LeCrat. Spent a year out of this series, got right back down uh, to the E-NASCAR qualifying a Road to Pro Series, made his way back here and is looking to, to try to make a statement and stay, uh, stick around for a while here in the Coke Series. Yeah, that's the goal. Went down to the uh, Contender Series, as you referenced. Was able to qualify back in with a 16th place finish in the standings there. Walked away with a couple of top 10s. Uh, so rightfully earned his way back into this one. Let's look back in the field of replay here. Ryan Luza, who is the most winning driver here in Las Vegas. Contact oh, there man. off of turn number two. Another good save as they went off the three, Malik but Ray. nearly a big mess for Malik. Yeah. Yeah, that looked like a little bit of contact. I think it was Ray and Michael Cozy Jr. Now, Cozy was the first driver, at least, uh, that had pit on lap 31. He had made more progress than anybody else who utilized that strategy, pushing a little bit harder. We've seen a lot of cars that came down to lap 34, uh, and there's a pretty big group of them that did. Uh, Ryan Doucette being one of them. Matthews Wack, uh, Nick Ottinger, a couple of cars that did that. They even came down and topped off uh, when we got the one to go signal. They have been very conservative. They've run some much slower times uh, than the race leader. In fact, they're about four tenths slower that time. That's intentional. They're trying to save fuel. They're hoping this thing plays out and we'll see. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of fall off. So I tend to think if, if we go green, uh, those fuel savers, if this works out, I think they're looking to be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, there's almost four different fuel numbers happening right now. The one that most of the cars are on is 
uh, the drivers who did not come down pit road a yellow ago. So that would be your leader, Wilson, White, kind of everybody for the most part through your top 20 or so. They've been out there for 41 laps since they last pitted. There's a couple, though, that have been out there for even longer. Caden Honeycutt, uh, 60, Jimmy Mullis as well. Looks like Hurst loses. So a couple more have been out for uh, the entirety or at least not getting full service. Then those two different strategies who didn't come down and top off, right? You mentioned Michael Cozy Jr. leads the charge. He does in 24th. He pitted 30 laps ago. But then the Booses and the Zawaks, the Ottingers, to you mentioned, I think Leahy and then Duval, the rest of the competitive cars who did it, they came back down pit road two laps later, topped off. It'd be fun to see if there's an advantage between the big group or those guys who came in and topped off on the fuel numbers. Be interesting to see for sure. No, with 38 to go, but up front, I mean, it is pretty much strung out at this point. Uh, with Graham Boland, we mentioned the, the progress he was making. He's pretty much kind of stalled out in terms of that gap being about half a second or so up to Steven Wilson. And what a breakaway here from these front three cars that have made up about a second over what Garrett Baines is running. And you talk about intervals, it's a bit of a rough one so far for Michael Guest, qualified back in 36th spot, but has been chipping away. He's P28 right now. Let's go on board his 2311 Racing Toyota with the Logitech on board camera. strategy starts to play out. You heard Guest, Savied Blake, and now cars to pit road. Salas and Laprade in from the top 15. Yeah, I think that says it all, and you really get a good listen there of how difficult it is to save fuel here at Las Vegas. A lot of these mile and a half, you're having to lift a decent amount as Steven Wilson, your race leader, is going to relinquish his spot at the top of the field. He's going to come down and pit. We saw Brian Laprade, Graham Bolin, several coming down. So 34 These are laps all to go. Those cars who pitted 46 laps ago. And I imagine within the next few laps, we're going to see the rest of the field. I mean, Parker White pretty much on his lonesome here. Casey Kerwin, Garrett Main. So now we really, this is when it gets good, Evan. We get to see kind of the 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 tug, the back and forth between these two strategies. White's going to stay out on the racetrack right now, but can these cars that are coming down, getting those four tires, are they going to be quick enough? to try and run down those cars that we heard Michael Guest and the many others who have been clutching this entire run. We get to see the math work out and it's gonna be fun. And it was a long pit stop for Steven Wilson. Uh, he spent a ton of time, 19 seconds in the box. Both of the drivers going for the four tires and a fuel in the 14 second range. But by coming down pit road, it gave Parker one an opportunity to lead two laps. Now the Duracell Camaro is in and that would hand things over to Bobby Zelensky as a lot of smoke is drivers really aggressive on the pit party entry or the pit lane entry there. They're going to get things down to 50 miles an hour. You mentioned it's kind of a sneaky pit road entrance. That's tricky here. They were able to do it, but not without flat spot in those tires. You can see uh, on your screen, though, that's the lap that they pit on, not the laps since they pit. So Bobby Zelensky, lap 21, it's now lap 69. So Zelensky has been out for about 48, 49 laps or so. He's going to continue to run about 10 or 12 laps is about as far as he could possibly go on fuel with where he was running. But now we start to see the, those cars that elected to pit Michael Cozy Jr. being the first one of them, Ryan Doucette, Michael Guest, who we heard clutching a little bit earlier. They're going to be the ones to start to move their way up the running order. And at least looking at those cars that have pit, I mean, they have to make up quite a bit of time. It's over a lap uh, that we see them exiting back out onto the track. Graham Boland, for example, he's coming out 25th right now. And 
I mean, he's still about five or six seconds behind Bobby Zielinski a lap down. He just got to the start-finish line. So uh, a lot of time to make up for these drivers that came down and took four tires. And we haven't seen a ton of time fall off uh, with these four tires. We've, they've fallen off about a second, maybe, uh, over the course of a run. But that's not a ton of fall off. And we're thinking all those drivers with their last pit stop lap on a lap in the 20s. So Zelensky leading and right on cue, Alfala and others, they're just certainly going to need a pit. A little bit squirrely on the way in. He didn't seem too worried. And that will hand things off to Michael Cozy Jr., who is the first of the maybes. 29 laps to go in this race. He has pitted now some 40 laps ago on the stint, needing to get an extra 30 out of it. Uh, it is a long road to hoe for sure, but then again, you'll see Guest uh, also pitted one lap prior, but you got Busa and Leahy who pitted later. Those oh, cars and topped off, and how about that getting split three wide with the 22 under him and the 17 above him. It's all part of the game. Cozy knows he can't try to keep up with pace on those guys. He's concerned with saving fuel right now, and those cars all on fresh tires and gassed up. Well, and again, he doesn't want to run the outside. He wants to run low. He wants to run as low as possible so that he can save as much fuel as possible. So you're not going to see him go to the high side and, and give that up unless he's being forced to. White Tinsley will go down to the bottom. And this is somewhat of a strategy that he was forced into by necessity. was involved in that accident a little bit earlier with Matthews Whack. He had about 48 seconds of damage, uh, which shout out to Alex Replay, the Twitch chat, uh, who passed along that piece of information to me. Uh, but something that he was able to get fixed, but that put him kind of in a bad track position scenario where, heck, this is, uh, this is what we got to try if we're in the back of the field. And it may just work out 27 laps to go. We'll see if, if he works out now. He's been pushing a little bit harder than some of these other cars uh, that are on his strategy. So we'll see if he saved enough fuel. He's going to be able to utilize a little bit of draft here to help him out. Cozy in his sophomore season picked up, I think, four top tens, uh, if not more, last year. A, a series best P4 finish for him in Atlanta. So had a pretty good rookie campaign back for some more. Blake, the other question is, hypothetically, the 38 car saves enough fuel to get to the end. Is there any chance you think that he has to slow down enough to save the fuel that these cars who came down, got tires, and fueled up could simply make up that gap on time? Is, is that Delta a possibility? It definitely is. Right now, Garrett Maines would be the first car that has pit. He's 23 and a half seconds back of Michael Cozy Jr. Now, he's about a second faster. That's not going to maintain throughout the next, I would say, 20 laps or so. Um, so at least the way the math is adding up, if it was a second per lap that Maines had in the back pocket, sure, he would catch Cozy with about two or three laps to go. I just don't think that that's going to maintain over the course of a run. Maines is going to slow down, but Cozy's going to be able to run relatively the same pace, assuming he saved enough fuel. But I kind of like where Michael Guest is running right now. We heard the clutching, haven't necessarily heard it for Cozy a little bit earlier. So Guest, who's about eight tenths, nine tenths back from Cozy right now, I, I like where Guest is a little bit better in terms of how much fuel he likely has in that car. It was real polite of Bobby Zelensky to unlap himself and get out of the shot because that look off of the back of the leader now shows you the gap between Cozy and that next car in line is Michael Guest who is doing everything he can to fight with the other cars on his strategy. And speaking of that call, how about Ray Alfale? Now, he's been out there for 57 laps. I think a different fuel number than the rest of these cars, likely not in that same conversation as Cozy and Guest. So curious if the Cape Coral Florida native hoping for a yellow. He's P3 right now, and he's got the 66 of Colin Keister all over the back bumper. And at this point, Alfala definitely can't make it to the end, but he's kind of been known, I would say, in recent years to take these contrarian strategies. It's what kind of got him through the Contender Series to where he made his way back to the Enas Park of the Cola iRacing Series. And sometimes we don't have the speed. You just got to try to do something different than the rest of the field. And if a caution were to come out right now, he would have the track position. Everybody, I would imagine, would come down and pit, and then all of a sudden you've gained about 20, 25 positions. So Ray Alfala looking to try and hit a home run here. May work out, it may not. We know these races tend to have some yellows late in the going. Uh, so Alfala, not a bad strategy call, but certainly it's going to be either a home run or a, a very tough strikeout for uh, Ray Alfala tonight. Oh, I know it's cliche, but if there's any track or any town to place a bit of a bet in and roll the dice, this is the one 
for Real Fallis. So we'll see if it plays out. He does lose that P3 spot to Colin Keister, so the 66 able to get on by. That settles out the battle for third and fourth. And we step back one spot in line to the Kevin Harvick Incorporated 62 of Matt Busa. He sits P5. He has got two laps more fuel than anybody else in front of him. He came down, topped off Blake under the same yellow in which Cozy guessed and Keister pitted, so he's got a little bit more in the reserves. And that may not be two full laps under green, but coming down and, and topping off, it's definitely worth something. I mean, that's probably two, maybe three tenths of a gallon or so that Busa has over those drivers in front of him, which, you know, that could be about a lap uh, in total. So Busa in a great spot as well, hasn't lost too much time, is still about two and a half seconds back. We'll really start to see, I think, the pace change with Cozy and Guest. And, uh, we actually see that playing out as Guest is now within about two-tenths of your race leader. Nick Ottinger, another driver, utilizing this saving strategy. He's pretty much been running with Busa this entire time. So this is going to get really interesting. By the way, look at Garrett Baines also, 14 seconds back. He has made up a ton of time, but is he going to fall off? Is he going to be able to maintain? And continue our march through the field with a look at Cody Bias in the number 27 machine. Uh, that 23, Keegan Leahy in front of him, a battle for position. Uh, Leahy on the older run, though, I don't, or sorry, Leahy on the shorter run, but Bias uh, in a position where he is not likely able to make it to the end of the race. And a change up front, the 45 car was able to reel in Michael Cozy. And after leading 11 laps consecutively, Michael Guest from the trenches has taken over the race lead in this one, Blake. And again, when we checked in with him back there in the 20s, didn't seem like things were going the way that he wanted, but maybe it's all playing out in the end. Now we'll see, does Cozy respond? Let's take a second look at the pass for the lead on the bottom. And the way that this pass happened, you could see Cozy doesn't contest it. That tells me that Cozy's a little bit short on fuel, that he wanted Guess to go on by. He needs a little bit of draft. He may be a little bit short of his number. So right now, Cozy may not be looking to, to win this race at the moment. Of course, he, of course, that's what he's looking for. But try to give up that lead, maybe go back, save a little bit of fuel uh, if the draft can help him and at least try to salvage a day that even if he can't win, he would still be able to, to run the pace and be able to score a top five or so. And going back to the cars who have already come back down and pitted and know they can go the scheduled distance in this race. Let's go on board with Kwame Scott and the Sunoco on board camera. That's as good as promise shot you'll see as any with those Sudoku cars running nose to tail right now. I know the, the Tark group hoping that things would end a little bit better. Still a lot to happen here in Vegas. Close it in on the final 10, but at least for the promo shots, those Sunoco cars looking good back there in the mid-30s. We jump back up front, though. Going to be 13 laps to go this next time by. Michael Gast holding a three-tenth of a second advantage over Michael Cozy Jr. in second. And don't look now, but Busa, Ottinger, Leahy on the doorstep within a second of these leaders. And right now, they're about three or four tenths faster than Guest and Cozy. They have definitely been backing off, have these top two to try and save a little bit of fuel, I'm sure. Perhaps they're looking to save a little bit of tire to the end. That's brought Garrett Maines, Kerwin White. They've been making up more time. The way this is funneling out of it, I mean, we're going to have three different strategies merge within the last couple of laps. This is going to be incredible to see, but right now, up front, those cars saving fuel. Right now, Ottinger and Busa, they think they have enough. It's go time. They're going to make the move on Michael Cozy for second, and right now, Nick Ottinger up front looking for the lead as they battle behind him. 
And you got the battle for the lead and the battle amongst the cars who have pitted on the bottom of the screen. All of this coming to a head as the battle for the lead is on. Ottinger to the inside of Michael Guest. He pitted two laps later. He's got a little bit more to play with and he will go to the race lead for the first time tonight. It is Ottinger to P1. And again, Ottinger ran so much slower than a lot of those drivers ran in the back of the field going to be a little bit easier to save fuel so i really like how this is looking for nick gottinger could say the same for matt busa as well they've been working together all race long as they have for many years with one another and now i think they're trying to control it and they're going to force guest and cozy to probably push a little bit past where they're comfortable but for now it looks like ottinger and busa they've done the math they think they have enough fuel to get it to the end and now they just get to race amongst those two before mains and perhaps that line of cars catches them. You look off of the back, a race leader, Nick Ottinger, and we cycle back to our picks from countdown to green. And I know Camille said it was the safe pick, but right now Nick has climbed out of a 37th place spot on the grid and is leading late in this one. It's a good pick. Wasn't looking good earlier, but I tell you what, the, uh, the Ottinger camp, they... They took the gamble here in Vegas, and right now it is paying off 10 to go. Even if Caution were to come out right now, Ottinger jumps the whole field. He gets to restart at the front. So things looking really, really good for that 25 group. However, Mains, Parker White, Graham Boland, those cars with fresh tires continuing to make up ground. About four-tenths of a second, though, probably not going to be enough to run them down at this pace with what Nick Ottinger is running right now. And you can see Cody Bias now to the inside of the 23 at Keegan Leahy. That battle on for third and fourth as well. And if they start fighting amongst themselves, could give Ottinger an opportunity to pull away. He's not checking out, but he has some breathing room. His advantage that time at the stripe at about three-tenths of a second. Now Bias clear of Leahy on the bottom. He'll slot into third. He is all of a sudden the man on the move. Going to be seven to go this time. By right back down to the inside of Busa. And Cody Bias going to try to get two spots in a single trip around the racetrack. Busa going to hang topside. There'll be a dead heat to the stripe, but Matt Busa... Cody Bias, I shouldn't say, making moves on Matt Busa, but it was Busa at the strike. Again, Bias, a long-time history of success in this series. He's been a part of this group as well. He and both Keegan Leahy have been hanging out up here amongst those cars that have saved fuel. Can't forget about Colin Keister either. He's been able to keep pace. His guests and Cozy continue to drop further back. So Bias thinks that he has enough fuel to make it to the end. He'll blow past Matt Busa and now trying to at least Get back to Nick Gottinger. Four tenths of a second is the gap. Is now Leahy going to be moving along with Cody Bias? His teammate Gas slips back to P6. Cozy sliding to P7. Seems like those two need more fuel saving and have had to bow out of this battle up front for the race win. Leahy carries the torch for that group. It's Busa behind it a fourth. And Cody Bias looking for his first win since Pocono of 2017. He's pulling away just a little bit for the former series champion and Keegan Leahy in third. You can see those intervals left hand side of your screen five laps to go in Vegas. Right now it would be Kerwin who's the first of those cars that did elect to pit. Now it would be Parker White. They're about five seconds back. They need a second a lap to make up. I don't think they have enough though. It's about four tenths, half a second that they've been making up. I think for the race win without something extraneous happening is going to be settled amongst Ottinger, Bias, and Leahy. Top of your screen, those drivers up at the front of the field with four to go. Bottom of your screen, that's the lead of all the cars at pit. And right now it is the 53 machine of Parker White, highest running car who is pitted 100% good on fuel. They're five seconds back. Could they possibly get into this conversation? They make a pass to Michael Guest. Once upon a time, we thought the 45 was going to be able to win it. And Michael Cozy over the radio says he does not have enough fuel and is coming to pit road. He pitted only two yellow flag laps earlier than all of the cars running inside of the top five.
Well, so you could see, yeah, Cozy not going to be able to make it. That brings up some questions, I think, for Michael Guest. Is he going to have enough fuel to get to the end? But up front, Cody Bias looking to go to victory lane here at Las Vegas down to the inside. They'll come around to two laps to go this time. Do they have enough fuel to try and make it to the end? No saving left now. They've got to go for the win as Leahy watches behind. Ottinger slices down, shuts the door. Popsicle sticks in the air. Two laps left to go. Ottinger looking pretty calm for the circumstances. Bias drives back down to the inside once more. Drag race down the Nellis straightaway. They need to come back to the white flag for this race to be official. Side by side for Cody Bias. This would be his first win in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series since 2017. It'd be the second of his career. Nick Gottinger looking for career win number one. As four time, the lap car will pass him low. White flag in the air. One more trip around Las Vegas. And how does that lapped car play effect? Bias goes to the inside, tries to get some of the toe off of Ray Alfalas' car. Bias, good in, but it's been the exit where Ottinger has been able to punch back sideways off the corner and now touching down the straightaway, side by side. Bias on the inside, Ottinger on the outside. They touch again, more contact. Ottinger washes wide, they'll crash. Bias is into the wall. Here comes Leahy. Again, Leahy. Leahy, who slices through the middle and wins in Las Vegas. Unbelievable waiting in the wings. If something would happen to your top two, and Keegan Leahy splits the wreck and is going to go to victory lane after a tough 2023 campaign for the 2311 driver. He starts 2024 with his first win in the second race. Unbelievable. And what a way to bounce back. Quiet all night long. Made the strategy game work. And in the end, it is Keegan Leahy, your race winner tonight in Las Vegas. This winning moment is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of eNASCAR. Keegan Leahy, three wide to the stripe and by six one hundredths of a second will pick up his first win of the 2024 season. Well, that celebration went all the way to pit road and back, and you can tell that he's excited about this one, Blake, a driver who has had much success in this series. Let's wind it back and take a look at your Coca-Cola move of the race. And the conversation was not Keegan Leahy, it was these two. Nick Ottinger fighting with the 27 of Cody Bias for the win, but it was the eventual contact in three and four that gave the opening to the 23. Yeah, I saw him out of the corner of our shot as we went down into turn three for the final time and how aggressive these two, they're already leaning on each other out of turn number two, so you thought something uh, could very well happen, but you could see Bias able to get a better drive through three and four. Ottinger hanging tough there on the high side. And this is, a, this, this, yeah, so this will be coming to the white flag right here. You can see Ray Alfalo, the lap traffic that's on the bottom, that with how well Cody Bias was driving this last lap, that draft probably helped him out a little bit. We can see Alfalo down the back straightaway, running a little bit high. Bias is going to try to negate the advantage that Ottinger has with that draft. And now they're already leaning on each other through three and four. You can see Bias drifting up the racetrack. Ottinger gets a little loose, and I think he just continues. He had a slide in the middle of three and four, never quite grabbed it. And Keegan Leahy just fast enough to win by 61 one thousandths of a second. Ottinger was loose that whole final lap and just could not hang on. And let's talk to some of the drivers as we head to the Sunoco post-race report. Keegan Leahy is your race winner tonight in Las Vegas, and Blake is with him. Keegan Leahy, you are once again a winner in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, the former series champion. You can flip on your camera for us. We'd greatly appreciate that. Yes, sir. But, uh, working on it. I thought it was on. Try again here. No problem there. Uh, a lot to celebrate, though, for you tonight. And how good does it feel after all that you went through last year? You're back in victory lane. I think it was Phoenix in the championship race, uh, your last conquer in the series, but you're back in victory lane here in race number two. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely incredible. Um, I honestly wasn't sure I was going to get back into victory lane. This series is getting so tough. Uh, so it's so tough to to run well in these races, let alone have a shot at winning. Um, yeah, I'll kick it back to you while I get my camera turned on here in a sec, but I hope everyone enjoyed the race. That was a crazy one. It was certainly crazy. A lot of different strategies playing out in the end. That brings up the question. So when you come down and you pit around that lap 33, we go back to green at lap 34. Do you know that you're going to commit to this fuel saving strategy and coming up to the end there? Did you know that you had enough fuel to make it to the end or were you still questioning I, it? I knew I had enough to make it um, if I saved a good amount. Um, but the, the issue is that we have to save so hard that those guys pitting, I wasn't really sure if they were going to catch us or not. So it was really close. Um, just really wasn't sure how that was going to work out. We didn't have it planned out from the start. Um, so, you know, it was more of a send it and hope it works out situation for me. Um, I plan to do this whole race basically attempting to, uh, basically attempting to play contrary in every, every situation I could. Um, but what ended up happening was it played into my hands with, uh, being able to be one of the few that took fuel. Uh, and topped off on that restart. I wish I took tires as well. I didn't have tires on that last run. I think I was racing some guys with tires, um, but it worked out, uh, saved the fuel well, had good tires at the end, and capitalized on some good luck as well. I know this has been a, a, a quite a year of transition for you and your personal life and being able to come back here Having that success, though, I'm sure it means a lot to you, Keegan. Congratulations. You're back in victory lane in the Coke Series. It's good to have you here. We look forward to a potential playoff berth for you here in 2024. Thanks so much, guys. And that is Keegan Leahy in victory lane here on the Sunoco post-race show. As he goes to victory lane... And somebody that looked almost destined to fight for it there in turn four was Nick Ottinger battling side by side there from with Cody Bias. Just want to ask you, Nick, what happened there uh, from your perspective with you and Cody's battle there to the end? I mean, that's a valid, good, good question. Ultimately, I mean, we're battling for a race win at the end. I mean, I was trying, sweating, basically trying to just hold, hold my lane here in the middle and try to take any momentum he had out. And ultimately, you know, I just, I broke loose after he, he washed me up and right into where a bump was, where you hit the rub block in the right rear and run 70 lap old tires. I just ultimately just lost. You can say I lost talent, but I mean, I just got loose the first time, tried correcting it and tried to slow him down as well. And ultimately just cost him a win, uh, cost myself at a better shot at winning and, you know, Sorry to Cody for one. Uh, it's not how I usually race. And, you know, we're just going for the win. You know, I'm very proud of our Logitech G team. People have their opinions on it. Uh, and ultimately, they can have whatever they want. Uh, I know what I'm doing in the driver's seat. And Cody, you know, he done what he tried to do to win the race. And, yeah, same here. So, um, ultimately, proud of our team. Uh, we, we rallied from a pretty poor uh, starting position and managed to race and strategy to, you know, where we needed to. And, you know, one spot short, uh, but partially my fault for that. And, you know, end of the day, it's a solid day for our 25 team. All right, Nick. I know we're, you're somebody that we often look forward to talking to. You're in the po you're on the podium pretty often in these races. I know we'll be able to talk to you further down the road. Uh, but thanks for stopping by with us, and congratulations on second place tonight. Appreciate that, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Sorry to Cody again. Sorry to the 27 team. They had a good fight today. And uh, hopefully to race them here in the future again. Nick Ottinger brings it home second. It's Cody Bias that brought it home in the 16th position. Uh, but we'll catch up here on the Sunoco post-race report with Colin Keister for Tony Kanaan Esports, who was just kind of waiting in the wings with, with all those cars we were talking about running up front. Michael Guest, Michael Cozy Jr., Nick Ottinger, all those cars that save fuel. You were just kind of hanging around out back. Uh, again, uh, how did your race kind of play out? And... When did you decide that committing to that fuel strategy was going to be worth it? Uh, yeah, first off, I just want to thank uh, Kanan Esports for the continued support and Timmy Cube, Micro Center, E NASCAR, Coca Cola. But uh, yeah, I got caught up. We I qualified mid pack and I got caught up in a wreck there at the beginning, so I was kind of 
mired in the back and that caution came out around lap 30 and I decided to just get fuel only fill the car up and I just stayed in the draft and I didn't save enough gas unfortunately those guys were able to get by me there late but I'm glad to come home with a third place finish after how my race started certainly so Colin I know uh, it's been a, a couple of up and down years for you here in this series but you come out here, race number two ends exactly how you want it. How is this kind of kind of carry you forward with some momentum and looking forward to the next few races we have coming up? Yeah, hope, hoping to carry the momentum forward. I know we got Atlanta up next, another super speedway race. I usually can run pretty well there. So, but I finally I upgraded my equipment finally, and I feel a little bit more confident with my ability. So we'll hopefully I have a good season. All right. Well, hopefully the, the equipment will be the difference maker here for you in 2024. Colin Keister finishes third for Tony Kanaan Esports here on the Sunoco Post Race Report. A big thanks to all of those drivers for sticking around and chatting with us post-race. Now let's take a look at your full race results tonight presented by Sunoco. Keegan Leahy, final margin of victory for the 2311 Racing Toyota, 0.062 seconds over Nick Ottinger, who will have to settle for that runner-up position. And the aforementioned Keister, who sneaks in for a P3. His night peaked at the right time. Matt Busa was in the conversation as well. He'll come home fourth ahead of Parker White inside of the top five. And then Casey Kerwin, Caden Hunt, Cut Vicente Salas, Steven Wilson, and Femi Olatson Boson, your top 10. And these drivers that pit, they got so close, including Seth the Merchant, who was so strong all night long. Both FGR Excel cars there in 11th and 13th had a great night. Bolin in 14th, Jimmy Mullis, another KHI car, top 15. Great rebound for that organization after a tough Daytona. Strauss in 16th, Cody Bias after a last lap crash out of turn number four. He was battling for the win. He ends up in 16th tonight. Malik Ray 17th, Ryan Luza in 18th, Zach Novak 19th, and Briar LaPrade will round out the top 20. And we'll continue on through. Wyatt Tinsley had been riding high coming into this one at Daytona. Winner settles for 21st position. Bobby Zelensky led three laps on the nine. He comes home in 22nd spot. Michael Guest down there in 28th position also was up front in this race, but unable to hold it all the way to the end and eventually had to really go into fuel saving mode and completely dropped out of the conversation for the win. And a couple of cars here, 31st on back that really just kind of didn't hit right on the strategy. They were in a great position if everything had worked out, like Ray Alfala, Michael Cozy Jr. Fortunately, just the cards did not play out how they had wanted, but you know, that could certainly happen in Las Vegas. It's happened to the best of us. That's a look top to bottom at your full race results, and i to wrap things up here for the Sudoku post-race report, but the action continues in two weeks' time, back to another mile-and-a-half track at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Blake, but a very different one for many reasons. One, that repave and the reconfiguration, but also, for the first time, how we're talking about a fixed setup points race in the history of this eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. I got to run Atlanta in NIS with a lot of drivers who are in this field, and we had about a 60 or 70 lap brawl at the front of the field, going three wide, four wide at times, side drafting, big runs. This track is going to put on one heck of a show. We saw one of the best NASCAR Cup Series races in history a couple of days ago. This is a track that iRacing built with the next-gen car. It's going to put on a heck of a show. Great challenge for these drivers, and uh, it is going to get chaotic. So you do not want to miss that in two weeks and we hope you join us then but until next time that is it for us here tonight from vegas as chapter two falls into the rear view mirror I want to thank all of you as always for tuning in on behalf of our entire team at iRacing and eNASCAR for all of our partners and on behalf of your broadcast team tonight for blake mccandless and myself evan pasoko want to say thanks for tuning in and congratulations to keegan Leahy, who is back in victory lane with his 13th career series win we're back in two weeks time that is tuesday march 12th from iRacing's virtual Atlanta Motor Speedway. That race and every race of the 2024 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series can be found exclusively here on the iRacing Esports Network. Until next time, good night from Las Vegas.
What does fearless look like? Like sliding through a glimmer of daylight? Side by side for the top spot. Like trading paint with a champion? Oh, and he spins it. Like starting in the back of the pack and stopping at nothing till everyone is choking on your dust. Get your flag here, man. It's time, baby. What does fearless look like? Find out for yourself. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Every time you sit behind the wheel, you buckle up for the unexpected. You get ready to take on the competition, embrace yourself for the chaos, the speed, the weather, the unknown. But above all, when strapping in, you put trust in yourself, your intuition, making your guide to win your drive to win. He's a winner in this. And nothing is going to stop you from winning. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. For anything on iRacing, there's just one name you need, Mo Cody. We now provide the best of the best in setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, and event organization. With cars across all four license classes, we have what you need to hit the track with confidence. Grab a subscription and save money while going fast at MaconeSetupShop.com forward slash subscriptions. And remember, at Maconi Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. This is the make or break moment. Oh, guy has broke the block. Oh, my goodness. Not just for the day, but for the years to come. Green has to win. This is where a race isn't just about the race. It's about the doors that can open. That kid is amazing. The number of fans wearing your number. This is the chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series.